Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Drab. I pretty has a quick video today talking about some new information regarding the Pokemon Company and a bunch of other things. I'm actually on Serebii.net's Twitter just for ease of use because my man Joe compiles that information like an absolute champ. So please do me the favor, check out the description below and go to Serebii's website. Go show him some love. Joe's the man. It makes my life easier. I did just live stream this with everyone, but I kind of wanted to recap everything. He's kind of got it nice and organized, so I'm going to rock with that. But uh, for those who don't know, there was a 30-minute press conference that Pokemon just did. We watched it live. They talked about some of the kind of uh, back-end stuff, some of the projects they're working on, and so on and so forth. And I just want to let you guys know that next week, on Wednesday at 9 o'clock in the morning, on the 5th of June, there's going to be a Pokemon Nintendo Direct, or a Pokemon Direct, rather, on Sword and Shield. So, for those looking for Sword and Shield information, you can watch it on my live stream at twitch.tv slash adrive next week, 9 o'clock in the morning, on Wednesday, on the 5th, right on twitch.tv slash adrive. We'll watch it all together. I'll start the stream usually an hour or two before that. So, anyway, this press conference, they covered a couple different things. The first thing they announced, that Detective Pikachu, the movie, they had a 3DS version of it. They're actually going to release a Detective Pikachu game for the Nintendo Switch. Seems kind of cheesy in my opinion, but nevertheless, they are going to be releasing a Nintendo Switch version of Detective Pikachu, which has an alternate ending to the movie. So for those of you who saw the movie, the game is a little bit different. I personally never played the game, so I don't really know, but maybe I'll pick it up for the Nintendo Switch. There was also a really funny bit where the guy who was pitching it had to plug the Godzilla movie that's coming out, and then the dude from Pokemon was like, dude, that was lame. You shouldn't be plugging Godzilla during this Pokemon presentation. It was hilarious. Go find the clip online. It was actually really funny. Next thing was there was a Pokemon Center announcement for Shibuya in Japan, I believe. They're actually going to have a new Pokemon Center. It looked really cool, man. There was like a Mewtwo kind of in a tank. And then there was like a really sleek, like, looked kind of like black and white too. Kind of vibes, like the Unova vibes. It looks so good. Really excited about that. I wish I could make my way out there to check it out. But unfortunately... Probably not going to make it out there, but the Pokemon Center did look super duper cool. They also announced that there's going to be a heavy push for China. So, previously, I know there's some restrictions in China in terms of video games and all sorts of stuff. But, uh, I'll actually zoom in a little bit here. Uh, but they are going to actually be starting to release some of the Pokemon games in China. It's a massive market, obviously, with a ton of people. So, there's a lot of potential there. Um, so they're going to release Pokemon Quest in China. I'm really disappointed because Pokemon Quest is a pretty fun game, but they never released Generation 2 or any of the other generations, so definitely a big bummer, and the fact that they haven't done anything to update that, so really dumb there. This is probably the biggest of the updates, though, Pokemon Home, which is basically Pokemon Bank, which is going to be kind of taken to the next level, coming out early in 2020, so not until next year, but Pokemon Home is going to allow you to connect your Nintendo Switch, your 3DS, your Pokemon Go, everything to one basic central location there was a couple really cool things they talked about where you're going to be able to transfer pokemon from pokemon go the 3ds games etc into pokemon home and you can transfer them back to sword and shield you can go two ways between sword and shield but you can't go back otherwise so if you transfer pokemon from pokemon go to pokemon home it can't go back in a go but it can go to sword and shield and sword and shield can go back to get home so just so you guys know really cool uh basically pokebank kind of stepped up one of the things i loved about this was say you had like a shiny charizard in pokemon go or pokemon let's go you could put it in pokemon home and then you could take that pokemon from pokemon home and you can actually trade it from your smartphone to another person who has it on their smartphone i don't really know how i just turned my flashlight on but i, I did apparently i'm gonna try to turn that off as i go here Okay, anyway, so uh, yeah, that's really cool. You're gonna be able to actually trade from your phone on the go, really cool. And you can see this here, uh, Joe's got it all, all set up, man, with the, uh, you see the two-way connection there between Sword and Shield to home and then go, 3DS, Pokebank, let's go all to home and then home can actually transfer back out and you can trade from it. They even talked about like if people are, a lot of Pokemon fans are in one area, maybe finding a way to group trade, some really cool stuff there. Uh, Pokemon Home is going to launch in 2020, and this is probably the biggest one, is they announced Pokemon Sleep. They really hyped it up in the trailer, talking about like Pokemon Go and people walking, and now they want to find a way to uh, have entertainment through sleep, so they're going to basically have devices, a Pokemon Plus Plus, and maybe a different device that's going to track. It's called a Pokemon Plus Plus. I don't know. It's going to track your sleeping and ensure that you're getting healthy sleep, and there's going to be probably bonuses in Pokemon Go or other games that are going to give you some sort of reward for getting a good night of sleep, so there's going to be ways to track your sleep kind of like Fitbits do and things like that right like the technology exists but Pokemon is trying to figure out a way to kind of gamify sleep which is pretty meme -y at first glance you think about it you're like wow that's really stupid but I actually 
think it's a cool direction. I'm not the one investing in it, so they can do whatever they want. But ultimately, I really like the idea of them trying new things. Maybe it's a hit, maybe it's not, maybe it flops. Doesn't really matter, right? Like, you have to try to see if it's gonna work and this, hey, who knows, man. Uh, so I'm all about it, and this is their Pokemon Sleep. They're gonna use your sleep patterns to affect gameplay. Very interesting concept, and uh, just goes to show, like Pokemon and, and specifically Nintendo and, and these brands, they do a really good job of being willing to innovate, step outside their comfort zone. Uh, that's what Pokemon Go is, right? Like it's very innovative and Pokemon, the Nintendo Switch in general, very innovative stuff. So uh, really excited to see what happens with sleep. Again, a lot of people are memeing on it, kind of making jokes of it, thinking it's really stupid and maybe it ends up being really dumb, but there also is the potential that it could be really cool. Uh, next thing was the Pokemon Go Plus Plus, again, this was a really bad naming. I'm just, I just, uh, I, I, you know, I'm not surprised when they have a thing called the Wii U after the Wii. Their naming conventions are really bad, but the Go Plus Plus, same kind of deal. Uh, it's a Go Plus, and then it's gonna work for sleeping and stuff like that. They kind of have it shown in this little little dude right there next to the Pikachu. Uh, in Pokemon Go, quick update: Pokemon Go Snorlax are gonna be available in Pokemon Go. They're sleeping as a kind of a promo for Pokemon Sleep. It's gonna know the move Yawn, so you're gonna be able to grab your Snorlax in Pokemon Go right now if you're looking to do that. So if you want to snag a Snorlax, they should be spawning. I don't know. I think they're they they know the the move Yawn. And then last but not least was Pokemon Masters, which looked really cool. This is actually gonna be coming out in uh, 2019. It's a mobile game with a lot of different trainers and characters from previous generations, Cynthia, Steven, Blue, etc. There were some screenshots here that looked super duper cool. Uh, you can actually see the Pikachu has four move slots. It uses Thundershock, does some damage to this other Pokemon, so that was really neat. Uh, you can see the different trainers, 3v3, Misty, Brock, and I guess yourself, and then there's the uh, the female trainer from, I think, the Univer, Univer region, excuse me. Um, you see Blue, he's got his Pidgeot. Says, hey there, welcome to the world of Pokemon. So some pretty cool stuff there. Um, I thought that was actually really neat. I think this game looks pretty cool, Pokemon Masters. Coming out on iOS and Android. And then the last thing, um, so it's coming out, they're gonna talk more about that next month. Maybe E3, maybe beyond, I don't know. And the last thing here, I'll load some new tweets here in case there's something new. But um, the Pokemon shirts are something, a lot of the people at the conference have these like Pokemon shirts on with tiny little Pokemon patterns on them. And they're gonna be releasing Pokemon shirts, which is gonna be a store that you can go online, you can customize these Pokemon kind of dress shirts with like collars and stuff. Uh, you can customize them and kind of do whatever you want with them uh, and order them for the original, I believe 151 Pokemon. It's coming out in the US and Canada next. I think it's already out in Japan, um, but that's gonna be coming pretty soon if it's not already out yet. And then Joe's talking about the fact that he's gonna have a Pokemon Masters page with everything updated there. So definitely some pretty interesting stuff uh, in terms of this conference. Again, the big takeaway is next week is gonna be the Pokemon Sword and Shield Direct. I'm definitely anticipating Legendary's release date. November 15th is my guess. Uh, potentially some early game Pokemon, maybe evolutions, maybe some sort of insight into the storyline or maybe one of the main mechanics, will we get armored Pokemon, will we get something else? There'll be plenty of videos regarding that next week and maybe as we gotta head towards next Wednesday. So again, mark it on your calendars, Wednesday the 5th, twitch.tv slash adrive, 9 a.m. Eastern. I wanna start a little earlier than that, but we're gonna watch it together. It was amazing, we had a lot of people watching together tonight, so that was really cool. Um, and then just to recap, Pokemon Detective Pikachu's coming out on the Nintendo Switch, new Pokemon Center, Pokemon Quest and a big initiative to move Pokemon into China. Very interesting there. Pokemon Home, probably the biggest takeaway is the fact that you're gonna be able to connect all your stuff through kind of one central application for all the consoles. Very interesting, the fact that you can transfer things from one to the other. Very, very cool there. Um, and then Pokemon Sleep, kind of crazy, but we'll see. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna reserve my judgments right now and kind of see what's gonna happen with Pokemon Sleep. There's some possibility. I don't know, well, I'm, I'm willing to be open-minded for now. A little weird though, a little weird, but I'm open-minded. I try to stay open-minded with these things. Pokemon Go Plus Plus, which is basically a Pokemon Go Plus, but it's gonna be able to function. Sleeping, you set it next to you, it hacks into your brain and who knows, sends information to the government. And Snorlax is out in Pokemon Go, sleeping around, it's got the exclusive move Yawn, you can find them spawning, limited time, go snag one before they're gone. I don't know if it's gonna be shiny or not, I don't think there's any reports of that yet. Um, and then Pokemon Masters, which I think is actually the coolest thing, uh, aside from Pokemon Home. This actually looks really cool. I'm, I'm very interested, because they, they have to kind of find a balance where it doesn't take away from what the main series games are, but it's still really unique. I mean, this this gameplay footage looks sick, and like there was this really cool animation of like Brock tearing his shirt off or whatever, and it looked, not that I'm interested in Brock, but it looked really cool. So, some pretty interesting stuff. If you missed the conference, this video has it covered. Again, please show some love to Joe Merrick and Cerebi.net. 
Thanks, Joe. Sorry I just jacked your Twitter for this video. I figured it was gonna make everyone's life easier and you get a little promo and everyone's happy, man. But I love Joe, he's a good dude and uh, he's a great job running his website. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna get to sleep, man. It's really late for me. I usually am not up this late. But uh, late video for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the conference. And next week is the big hype, baby, Sword and Shield. I'm excited. My name is Dan. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you guys are new. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.